I'm getting a Vandercook 320 proof press working and one part that's missing is one of the bumpers for the carriage stops. This bumper here is the one on the operator side at the right hand edge. Uh, we're looking at it from the back here. But the one that is missing belongs here, which would be the back side of the press at the right hand side for the operator. So I have to make a new assembly for this. Now the other two blocks which fit at the feedboard side are slightly different. They have an adjustment screw here so that you can have the uh, carriage park at just the right place and land squarely on the springs. Because I was missing the bumper block I was of course also missing the spring but I managed to get a replacement one from someone else's parts stock but the replacement one is about a quarter inch longer I'm going to have to compensate by making the socket deeper in the bumper block I make. These springs are very stiff. They're made of perhaps 3 16 square section steel and I can just barely move them at all. As for the tolerances I need when I'm making this block, you just look at these two adjustable blocks. They are noticeably different lengths. So I don't think anything here is very high tolerance. The only thing that's really required is that the spacing of these two holes be right so that the screws can go into the holes in the base without binding. Other than that, everything's pretty loose. But the geometry of this is pretty simple. It's just a steel block, rectangular. Uh, I don't have to make this hole because I'm not making an adjustable one. It's got two countersunk holes here for the screws that hold it to the press bed. It's got a threaded hole here for a grub screw that locks the spring from coming out. And it's just got this rather deep large hole for the spring itself. I'm going to have to adjust the hole depth to fit this replacement spring with about the right amount of stick out, which is about 5 eighths of an inch. So I've measured up the original block before I assembled it and put it on the press and made up a rough drawing of it. I've already got notes in pen here for modifications I'm going to make. Aside from what's here, I'm going to make a mirror image of this one. That way this set screw is facing out this way, so you can actually undo the set screw and pull the spring out without taking the block off the press. So I'm going to make a mirror image of what's on the drawing here, and I'm going to make this socket deeper so the spring has the right amount of stick out. Uh, I have annotations here on how big to make the countersink, but well, what I'm actually going to do is adjust the countersink so that the bolt sticks out a quarter inch when I insert it through the hole. That seems to be how the old bolts fit. It doesn't sound like much, but that's what they did. The stock I have to make this part is a piece of cold roll steel, and it's already one and a quarter by three inches. That's two of the dimensions I need. So I just need a piece that's one and three quarters of an inch this way. This end of the block is maybe a 30 second of an inch off being square, so I have to compensate for that when I measure things out. I'll just measure things out here so I put the uh, marking out fluid at about the right place. That way I don't have to paint the whole thing. Just have to leave that to dry for a few minutes. The die cam is dry now, so I can mark my one and three quarter inch dimension. I'm, because of the way this end is cut off square, this is actually the short end, and that's the end I'm measuring from. I'm not actually going to cut on the line with the saw because I need some margin for machining off the rough saw cut. probably end up cutting it about a sixteenth of an inch longer. I don't want too much metal to have to remove though, because my mill is not a big powerful one. And cutting steel like this will go pretty slowly. I've got my rough cut block in this vise on my mill. I squared it up left to right just by holding a square against the end of it, because you can't rely on the bottom side being uh, square, because it's the other cut I just made. 
and now I'm using a fly cutter to square it up and smooth off the top. Unfortunately, this little mill doesn't have much power, so I have to go really slow. I'm going at half an inch per minute and cutting off ten thousandths of an inch per pass. So this is probably going to be the last pass on this side, and after that I'll flip the work over and do the other side, smooth it off, and then trim it a little more down to the correct size. I'm just completing the first full pass over the last face. I'm going to move the part out from under the mill head and measure it to see exactly how big it is now. So I'll set the readout to that. I'll be able to use the readout now to get the rest of the cut depth. I stopped this one early so you can see there's a bit of a shadow here. Normally on the last pass I'm just going to let the cutter go all the way through. I'm going to go, go down another ten thousandths. Just finishing up its last pass now. The, the readout reads uh, 1.75 inches, but I'm actually going to let this run till the uh, till the back arc of the fly cutter clears the metal as well. That will get a uniform finish all the way across. And with the final pass done, I can pull it out of the vise and see if I got the size right. I should be close enough. There we go, a thousandth under. That's pretty good. And on the other side, a few tenths over. Now I'm going to be deburring these edges and doing everything else with using marking out. First I'll mark things out roughly so I make sure I don't make like a mirror image of the part I need or something and so I know where to put the die cam. So I'm going to be putting the big hole for the spring in this end. And that's going to be centered. I'm going to be doing that on the lathe. And then on this surface, I want these two holes one and a quarter inches in from the back end of this part. So they're going to be about here. And there's three eighths, sorry, seven eighths of an inch apart, which means I think that means that there's, let's see, one and, a, one and three quarters. That's seven quarters plus seven eighths give seven eighths, so it's seven sixteenths in. So they're going to be about here and about here. So I want some die cam there, and then I want to make the mirror image of this part. So I want the tapped hole to be here, and because I'm making the pocket thicker, I want it to be 1.138 inches from this end, not 0.938. So that is about one and an eighth. So I want to spot a die cam about there. Now I'll put on the die cam and let it dry for a while. And once this is dry, I'll do a slightly more detailed layout than just these quick marks with the felt tip pen. To do the marking out, I'm using a height gauge. It seems like the easiest way of doing it in this case. So I want to mark some holes here at 1.2 inches from one end. So I've already set this to zero properly. Here at 1.2 inches. run the block across like this, 
Made up a nice sharp line. And uh, let's see, what else do I need? I need these two ones seven eighths of an inch apart. They have to be seven sixteenths in from each side. That's 0.4375. Back down. That's four three seven five. Just double check that I actually have the correct distance between these holes. It should be seven eighths of an inch, and it is quite nicely. So I have these two hole center marks, and I have this hole center marked. I don't need to mark the hole at the, bit at the end because that's just going to be turned on the lathe. I'll end up centering centering it in the chuck and turning it that way. So the next thing is to mark uh, to center punch these scribe lines. To center punch the holes, I'm actually using an optical center punch. I don't know if, the, if it's just a gimmick or a useful tool, but I find it quite useful. So, find my scribe marks, and center the crosshairs on them, pull out the lens, replace it with the punch, just give it a little tap. And it looks perfect. Same for the other hole here. And for this hole. I've got my work centered up in the four jaw chuck. I actually have two of the jaws facing inwards and two facing outwards because this is sort of an oblong cross section. But that grips things pretty well. I'm getting ready to drill a center hole in the end. This will be the start of the hole for the spring. That's enough of a dimple to keep a regular twist drill centered. I'm going to be drilling this hole in several stages, starting with about a 5 16 drill here. And adjusting to the point of the drill with the scale at zero here on the quill is just at the surface of the metal. That way I'll be able to use the scale to get the hole depth correct. And I should probably look at things a bit. And away we go. Order. I'm 
up to a three quarter inch drill. And I'm going to turn down the latest speed. Sixteenths. That's our intermediate between the existing hole size and the size I'm going for. the boring job well you know camera problems but it wasn't a boring boring job it was rather exciting because the largest drill I had was too small for the actual diameter that the boring head requires to go into a deep hole so I had to bore about a quarter inch deep out to the, near the full diameter and then start the hole diameter again and bore another quarter inch deep out to the hole diameter and so on all the way in so it took a while, but now there's the finished hole. You can still see the, maybe you can still see the dimple at the bottom from the drill point. And here's how the spring fits in the hole. And that's probably about the right amount of stick out. It's a tiny bit more than 5 eighths, but it's close enough. The next step is to drill the hole for the set screw that holds the spring in place. I've got a quarter inch stub drill here already set the part up so that it goes into the center punched hole neatly. So I'll do drill through with this drill first. proper tapping size for 5 16 thread is an F size drill. I do not have lettered drills. And I use the closest thing which is a 6.5 millimeter. And I have to lower my table to do this. I can tell if I'm on position by which way you see, you see the drill move when it shifts over. And actually 6.5 millimeters or F is only seven thousandths more than a quarter inch. So this is hardly going to drill anything. And I'm going to use the drill press to start the tap. I'm not going to do it under power, I'm just going to the quill here so I can turn the quill by hand. This 
is a brand new tap, never used before. Let's see how it works. Once I get this started, I will have to use a tap wrench to continue. That worked well. Let's do this again. That's about as far as the chuck can do by hand. By hand. So I'll just release it and now I can put the tap wrench on there. Tap worked really nicely. And I'll just deburr the hole a bit. That's good. Now I just have to drill these two holes that will hold the uh, the bumper block in position on the press. I'm going to position the part in this vise so that the holes end up not striking the, the structure of the vise underneath. Switch back to the quarter inch spotting bit. Tighten up the drive belt on the drill press again. And get my position. I'm going to raise the table again. This is a double belt drive, and I find every time I need to change speed, I seem to need to swap the, belt, the two belts. 650 RPM. job before finishing is to countersink these holes.
actually have a sharp countersink. I'm going to finish the countersinking. Just a little bit deeper. That looks like that could stand a little more projection. That's barely 3 sixteenths of an inch. So I think I'm going to have to countersink a bit deeper. Got about a quarter inch projection on the bolts. So just have to round over these top edges and these two back edges and then polish everything off. of the marks from the fly cutter still left here but I don't think I'm going to worry about them those will be on the inside I started by rounding the corners with a file and I realized I accidentally did it on the underside instead of the top side so now it's got um, eight rounded edges instead of um, five like it should have oh well that's not really important but there's the finished part I just have to dry off the water I had to cool it off a bit it was getting hot from sanding the fasteners on the press are not zinc plated. These screws are, so I'm soaking them in some hot double strength vinegar for a little while. Hopefully that'll take the zinc off and just leave them with a plain steel finish. Here's the bumper stop I made installed on the press. And here's the other one. That's at the far end from the feed board on the operator side. That's the original one. 
The screws do not match the ones I have now. They are, these are very flat head with sharp corners. And the ones I have are rounder around the edges. And then here's the back one at the operator end. And this is one of each screw because one of the screws is broken. And this is all the junk that I'm still using to restore the press. And there's the one on the operator side at the feed board end. You can see the adjusting bolt sticking out of the back of that one. Just like this one. I think my next trick now is to actually clean all this junk off the bed. And uh, set the timing of the print drum because it's just at some random position right now.